1911, Nanjing, China. Sun Yat-sen has just been elected provisional president of the new Republic of China after the fall of the Qing dynasty. After so much pain, democracy had been brought to China. Little did Sun know that victory would be short-lived. <laughs> After the revolution, Sun announced that he would step down for Yuan Shikai to take power, but that ended up being a horrible mistake. After taking power, Yuan crowned himself emperor and tried to restore the monarchy with himself in charge. He eventually resigned. However, that caused the republic to mostly fall apart, leading to what is now called the Warlord Period in 1916. In the midst of the chaos, two Chinese men named Chen Zuzu and Li Daishao came together and created a new political and military party, the Chinese Communist Party. From 1921 to 1927, the CCP aligned itself with the Kuomintang until Chiang Kai-shek turned on the party and began the brutal guerrilla war, now known as the Chinese Civil War. It lasted for nine years before an unstable peace was created thanks to the Xi'an incident in 1936. The Soviet Union ordered the CCP to ally with Chiang Kai-shek, to resist Japan, as they believed that Japan was the largest enemy in Asia. Chiang had opposed the idea of any form of alliance, especially after the nine-year civil war he had just fought. One rising force in the CCP over the past nine years, Mao Zedong, contacted the nationalist leader, Jiang Zuilang, regarding the idea of China uniting against the Japanese. Jiang's father was killed by the, Ch by the Japanese, so he had personal reasons to side with this union. When visiting Xi'an in December of 1936, Jiang was kidnapped by his generals, Zhang Zuilang and Yang Hucheng. Both Nationalist Party members and a CCP delegation led by Zhu Enlai came to Xi'an to agree to unite against the Japanese. Jiang, possibly fearing for his life, did eventually agree that the Japanese were a greater threat. With that, the Chinese Civil War was over. For now. From 1936 to 1945, the KMT, the Kuomintang, and the CCP worked together to fight the Japanese. After 1943, the CCP started taking land from the KMT. By 1945, when World War II ended, the two sides went back to war with each other for another four years when the KMT was finally pushed out of the mainland and fled to Taiwan. They are still a, a sovereign nation on that island to today. Thus, on October 1st, 1949, the chairman of the Communist Party of China, Mao Zedong, proclaimed the creation of the People's Republic of China and the total defeat of the Kuomintang. In 1953, Mao created the Five-Year Plans, which collectivized major, major industries, and, and started a tradition in the PRC of five-year plans every five years, of which they are on their 14th currently. Later in the same year, the leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, died, and Nikita Khrushchev took over as the premier of the CCCP. After Stalin's death, Mao thought he would be recognized as the figurehead of communism on the world stage, but Nikita Khrushchev did not recognize this claim. This might have been the start of the Sino-Soviet split, a series of events that led to the dissociation of China from the Soviet Union. There are multiple factors in this topic, but in simplified terms, the Soviet Union had promised to help China develop nuclear weapons, but Khrushchev backed down from this deal and started to move more towards the West. In 1958, following old Stalinist and Soviet examples, Mao Zedong began the Great Leap Forward, much like Stalin's five-year plan, which caused the second worst famine in history, the Holodomor. Ironically, Mao's Great Leap Forward caused the deadliest famine in history, with more than 30 million people dying as a result of Mao's rapid industrialization. According to Yang Shenjing, the writer of Tombstone, which is a detailed record of the, of the Chinese famine, Documents support cases where people ate other people. Parents ate their own kids. Kids ate their own parents. And we couldn't have imagined there was still grain in the warehouses. At the worst time, the government was still exporting grain. Two years later, Peng Zhen and Khrushchev openly clashed, which made the Sino-Soviet split public to the world. Then, China invaded Aksai Chin, an area in Kashmir. Although China won this war and consequently gained an ally in Pakistan, since they had both gotten into wars with India. It also solidified the Sino-Soviet split, since the USSR refused to help. Nine years after the Sino-Soviet split, Mao finally got his nuclear bomb, as well as a satellite and a hydrogen bomb. In a very interesting move, China is one of the only nations with a no-first-strike policy for their nuclear weapons. Starting in 1966, Mao began what was called the Cultural Revolution, 
which was used to clean up the party, mostly by removing or killing Mao's political rivals and prominent figures such as artists, scientists, and journalists. Meanwhile, back in 1950, Taiwan also received U.S. naval protection during the Korean War. It wasn't all good for Taiwan during this time, though. The PRC was accepted into the UN thanks to Richard Nixon's rapprochement with the mainland China, abolishing Taiwan's global recognition in the process. Around a similar time, Mao Zedong died at the, at the age of 82 after 27 years in power. His wife, Jiang Qing, was arrested by the new premier of the party, Hua Gaofeng, for crimes against her involvement in the Cultural Revolution. By now, a power struggle had begun by, be, between Hua Gaofeng and party newcomer Deng Xiaoping. After a short struggle, multiple Deng supporters came into positions of power, including the premiership after Hua resigned in 1980. Thus, Deng Xiaoping became paramount leader of the CCP, without ever holding the position of premier, general secretary, or president, being the only paramount leader in Chinese history to do so. Under Deng, restrictions were loosened on the free market, and the economy started to open up. This practice is now known as diet communism. Another policy implemented under Deng in 1980 was the one-child policy, which was introduced to slow China's immense population boom. Due to corruption in the party and a desire for economic reform, Chinese college students began protesting in Tiananmen Square, starting on April 15, 1989. Over the next two months, the protests in the square grew report to reportedly over one million people. It all came to a head on the night of June 3, 1989, when the People's Liberation Army rolled into the square in tanks, crushing thousands of people. This continued into the morning of June 4th, when in a now famous picture, an unidentified man stands in front of a row of tanks before a group of people pulls him away. This was one of, most of the most brutal massacres in history, and completely distanced the PRC from the rest of the world. The immediate reaction to the massacre by the United States was current President George H.W. Bush's decision to halt all military sales with the nation and cooperation with high-level officials. In 1997, Deng Xiaoping died, and Hu Jintao took over as the next paramount leader. He led until he was unexpectedly escorted out of the 2012 CCP conference meeting and was replaced by Xi Jinping, the current leader of the CCP. He began a major corruption campaign that, not unlike the Cultural Revolution, was used to remove some of his political rivals and consolidate power for himself. This led to his changing of the constitution in 2018 to allow him to be premier for life. That is the entire history of the People's Republic of China from the fall of the Qing Dynasty to today. In conclusion, the history of China is a turning point in history because its creation facilitated the rise of communism in the Cold War and more recently, the economic battle between the two major superpowers of our modern world.